Hey everybody, today I want to talk about verbena. It's one of those plants that most people have heard of it, but not everyone's grown it. And it has some really amazing characteristics. So not only does it give the, these giant splashes of color, it blooms right from spring until fall. It can handle pretty cold temperatures. It's not one of those when the temperatures get into the 40s that we have to start worrying about, you know, like we do with maybe coleus or begonias. This is one that can handle it. Uh, it doesn't necessarily like freezing temperatures or frost, so that will send it into its kind of dormancy or kill it off. Uh, so that we don't want to see, but it can handle our cooler springs uh, and into the fall when our nights start getting cold. So that's great. It's also very deer resistant. So they tend to leave it alone. So it's a nice one to be able to put out in a sunny spot where you know the deer always go to. They'll more than likely leave the verbena alone. Of course, our deer, you never know what their appetite's going to have. Uh, but Hey, that's the case. Now, they are generally classified as self-cleaning, but that said, uh, they tend to, once the flowers fall off, and they do fall off on their own, they leave, we call it the rib cage. Now, there is a technical term for it, but it's just what the flowers used to be on. Uh, that can be a little, eh, not as pretty. So we tend to kind of give them a quick trim, but if you don't do any deadheading on them, don't worry, they'll just keep flowering. You don't need to deadhead to encourage any kind of new flowering. So that's a really great characteristic. One of the things that sometimes can happen with verbena though, is that it can go in and out of flower depending partly on the variety and partly on the conditions. So sometimes you'll have like 10 days of like amazing blooms and color and then those kind of start to fade and then you have kind of a lag for seven to 10 days and then the color comes back in full force. It's not always the case, but it is something to consider uh, when you're doing it. If you need it to have color all the time, uh, some verbenas aren't as good with that. You're gonna need to kind of try them out. Uh, we have several varieties here. This is the first year we're trying the Superbena from Proven Winners and so far it's been quite impressive as far as the colors, the size, and its growth and vigor. Um, we're going to be keeping an eye on it for kind of if it does cycle in and out of flower because um, sometimes, uh, especially when it's younger, like the lanai and the last car can kind of do that. So uh, we'll, we'll see how, how that goes. I'm going to now show you maybe a close up of some of these different colors. Uh, it's going to give you an idea of what to look for uh, and how much variation there is in the verbena. So we'll start down here at this end. This one right here is the Lanai Deep Purple and it is a beautiful, rich, dark purple color. The uh, petals are just a consistent kind of dark shade all the way across. It's absolutely stunning. Looking really nice next to this one here. This is the uh, Lascar Orange Lava and orange is not a color you're gonna find in Verbena. And this, I wouldn't necessarily call it a true orange. It's more of a coral, but it's one of the most intense colors I've seen on a verbena. This is the one that people are going to see. If you plant it up by the house and uh, they're down at the end of your driveway, they are going to see this color because it is a standout. This one here is the Lascar Purple Plus White. And this one's a bicolor, so you can see the petals you know, on this area here are going to be a different color than the ones on the outside. Gives it a nice kind of ring look to it. And it, you know, it'll just keep uh, sending up the new buds. They start from the outside and work their way in. So as it, it kind of keeps getting bigger and bigger, you really will kind of continue to see this ring and then you'll only see this other color on the outside. Even though the ones inside have the other color in there, uh, you don't notice it as much. And then one of my favorites is this one here. This one is called Bright Eye. And when we're talking about verbena and we talk about the eye, we're talking about the center of the flower. So this one you can see has that really beautiful purple magenta inside. It uh, starts out kind of with the darker color and the flowers will fade, but the eye does not. And this gives it a really interesting effect. It makes it look almost like it's kind of an ember. And so in general, we, you know, we don't like when our uh, petals fade, but in this case, it really does enhance the, the flower and give it just something a little bit different than some of the others. And then next to it here, we have the Lanai Cyclops. Uh, Cyclops is great because it has that beautiful white eye in with that purple and this purple matches really nice with the deep purple so if you wanted to put them together you can get a good contrast going with those but absolutely stunning um, and we've had really good luck with this cyclops one the flower heads get nice and big over here this one is lanai strawberry and so this is kind of that fruit punch kind of pink or red uh, so it's not red nor is it pink it's just this beautiful kind of intense color we used to have the deep pink and this strawberry is just a more saturated color and it holds up to its color much better than I think that the 
the deep pink dip. Deep pink was beautiful, but this one's, you know, just beyond that. And then over here in this basket, and you can see how it grows in a combo. Now, right now, it's just starting out, so it's still kind of mounded. It's going to start trailing very shortly, and it is quite vigorous, so it's going to compete with those petunias very easily, and they tend to kind of, you know, scoop out over the edge and you know keep going they'll you know kind of help cover the pot um, there are varieties that are just upright so the upright varieties are going to stay more in this kind of style the trailing varieties are a little bit more popular this is the firehouse white so a beautiful white on there and you can see it has that little bit of a lime eye I wouldn't even call it an eye but the center is a little bit lime absolutely beautiful this one over here is the Lascar Red, I think, and it has that nice red eye. So you can find some that have an eye and some of them don't. So that's how they're kind of classified uh, when you're you know, getting them, if it has an eye or not. This one over here is the Firehouse Burgundy. Now, when I think of Burgundy, I don't think of something this pink or this magenta, but it is a stunning color as well. And it has that little bit of the white eye in there as well. Uh, over here, we have some of the Proven Winners varieties. So this one here is the Sparkling, uh, rosé superbina. So we're trying these out this year and so far these have been growing a lot faster and flowering a little bit more abundantly than some of the other varieties but uh, they came in a little bit bigger too so they had a bit of an advantage but you can see again that same kind of bicolor action going on. It's just this is a really beautiful one. The nice thing about the bicolors are also that you can kind of mix it with other colors and you don't have to have it be matchy matchy because the kind of gradients in here are going to pick up some of the colors around it. So that's really a nice uh, feature when you're do using a bicolor. This one here is called Superbina Stormburst, and it's got that beautiful striping going on. So it's a la lavender type color, and then each flower has the white in it as well. And this, I've noticed certain varieties from the Superbina seem to have bigger flower heads than others. So this one seems to have a very large flower head. Um, this one decent size. Uh, I don't notice it quite as much on the uh, Superbina Royale Plum Wine. Uh, this is really a beautiful kind of uh, intense purple. It's not quite the same as what we see from the dark purple. Let me go grab the dark purple and just show you how they compare. So maybe on camera they look similar, but the deep purple, I should call it, is a little darker, whereas the Plum Wine has a bit of a more brightness to it. And then this is, I think it's called Superbina Whiteout. That one has giant flowers as well. Now you're not gonna see it in these examples. This one seems to be a little bit more vigorous than the other Superbinas as well. But I mean, these are just starting out, but they are gonna just keep flowering and flowering. This one here is the Superbina Royale Romance. And this is a beautiful red, really intense, rich, kind of velvety color to it. It's, it's really dark as well. So when you compare this red to what we saw in the um, uh, Firehouse red, uh, there's, there's, they're completely different kind of color schemes here. So that's, that's a really nice one to see. And then over here, this is Peachy Keen. And Peachy Keen, Super Bean of Peachy Keen, this one, the, color, the flowers are a little bit, you know, multicolored. And that gradient really means that it can pick up oranges, peaches, uh, apricot colors, all those kind of tones play nice with the peachy keen. So uh, this one too, the flower heads have been really large on it. And this one's been, you know, flowering for quite a while. Do have one of the Imperial Blue. This is a new one last year from Proven Winners. And this one has just been gorgeous. And it is a different color. So when we compare it to the Superbina Royale Plum Wine, this is definitely more purple. When I put it next to the deep purple, sorry, you can see it does have that little bit more of a blue shade. Uh, I've seen it uh, planted out and it definitely looks a you know, more blue than what we see in some of the other varieties. So I'm just, you know, really enjoying the flowers on these. When I've got verbena growing in containers, I do try to pay attention to how it's spreading. So you'll notice this petunia is starting to kind of fill in a quite a bit over here, and we're not getting all the color over on this side. So a lot of times you can just kind of take your verbena and just kind of train it in one direction or another. Uh, so if I just tuck this under, and you're not gonna see too much, I do that a little bit here, I do it over here as well. I'm gonna be training that verbena to kind of spread throughout the basket. Now, it's not gonna look natural today. Um, I'll probably take another one and stick it over here because this, um, I have a feeling this petunia is gonna be a lot more vigorous uh, than, than 
we expect. Uh, I also would maybe try that with some of the calabrachoa. You can also trim back some of the petunia to give the other plants a little bit of a, uh, an advantage so that they don't get crowded out. Once they're all established, they tend to kind of behave a little better. But so now I've got verbena kind of on each side. And because it gets those arms, you do have to kind of watch out for that. Now, when it comes to cleaning verbena, I don't know if I have any that have spent blooms. Sometimes with verbena, it can be kind of hard to tell if it's coming or if it's going. So right now, because the plants are so young, I don't have any that are on their way out, but uh, it will almost look the same way when it's uh, on its way out. But what I want you to notice is see how it, the stem comes down here and then there's a branch there and already it's starting to develop its next pair of flowers. So once this one is done, I would just cut it just above where the branch is and then you're gonna get basically two flower heads where there was one. So you can see how verbena ends up getting you know, more and more uh, flowers as the season goes on because you keep seeing that branching happen. Now, one thing to watch out for with verbena is that it can be prone to getting powdery mildew. Now, the hybrid varieties are mostly resistant to it, but if the soil's kept too moist or if the leaves are kept too moist, you might find that it does start getting that powdery mildew. Uh, to treat that, you can either use neem oil or another fungicide, and that usually takes care of it pretty easily. Uh, every once in a while, you'll end up cutting off some of the branches that are affected, but otherwise, it's pretty easy to treat. Um, so you just keep an eye out for that. Uh, Overall, just kind of keep that soil from getting wet all the time because verbena in general doesn't want to have wet feet. It likes to just have kind of regular moist soil uh, and kind of regular watering uh, and you can let it dry out a little bit between each watering and it'll be fine. So uh, it's pretty easy. I don't want to scare you away with this idea of powdery mildew. Uh, it's, it's usually not a big problem, especially with these new hybrid varieties, but hey, I uh, want to warn you of that, uh, but hey, it's beautiful. And the other thing is, is that it does look really fantastic in the landscape. So a couple good verbena plants out in the yard can go a long way because they, over the season, just kind of spread out a whole lot. And so it's a great one to plant out because you'll, you'll be pretty impressed with the kind of blanket of color that it creates.